I think in order to justify bidding in the first place and to, to put on this show, you've got to have a much wider purpose. And that, in a way, is what the Olympic movement want. They want the Games to, to deliver tangible long-term benefits. That's good for the Olympic movement, but it's also very good for the host city and therefore the people that live there. And that's really what fundamentally we need to try and achieve. And so the Games is a fantastic motor to make that happen in a very fast and coordinated way. What we've done in seven years would have taken decades otherwise, and it wouldn't have been achieved in the same strategic way with the right infrastructure, the low carbon energy with the energy centre, the treatment of wastewater, so we've got a dual water system here, all these amazing parklands like the, the wet woodland that we're standing in at the moment with reed beds, creeks, there's a kingfisher bank there which funny enough has San Martins nesting in it, but that's great, the, the, all this wildlife is coming back into an area that was originally you know, badly polluted, it was derelict, there was a lot of invasive weeds in there, we had to clean it up, decontaminate the soil, you know, um, clean out the rivers, and all that would not have happened if we hadn't had the focus of the Games to drive this project forward. I think we've learnt a lot from previous games and there's you know, lots of people say oh there's not enough thought given to legacy well I think we've dispelled that myth now and not only is the park looking great it's on time it's on budget to high sustainability standards but that doesn't stop afterwards in fact the for some people the most exciting phase is after the games and how this is going to eventually open up to the communities that live around this area and for people to start using it and become alive and a real part of the fabric of East London but at the same time something which has got sustainable energy efficient buildings, efficient transport and great wildlife areas. Beyond the park itself, we recognise that the Games is probably the largest logistical exercise in peacetime, and that requires an awful lot of materials and resources and people. Now, can we do that more sustainably? And if we can show how we can raise the bar for the standard of delivering events, then that's something that can happen around the world. It's not just about the geographical proximity of East London, it's about the world of events, and these are happening all around the world all the time. Future Olympic and Paralympic Games, World Cups, Commonwealth Games, cultural festivals, major exhibitions and conferences. There's no end to the world of events and they all have similar characteristics. Large numbers of people coming for a common purpose so they have to travel. You have to feed them, you have to clear up after them, you need security, you need entertainment so it takes energy and water. Uh, you need venues to be accessible so all different communities and people with different abilities can, can come there. So that's the sort of the anatomy of a, an event. And the work we've done with London 2012 is to really dissect that and find the most sustainable ways of going about it. So we've looked at fully public transport games and the active travel programme alongside for people to cycle and walk. We've worked endlessly with the catering industry and all sorts of different experts in the food sector to look at how can we have a much more varied and balanced, um, sustainably sourced offer of food for, for the event, for the spectators, for the athletes, the media, all the different client groups. and then that um, matches with the waste system so the, um, the food packaging we've got is colour coded in, and that fits with colour coded bins so that orange compostable materials go in the orange bins, green recyclable materials go in the green bins and that's part of getting people to participate in our sustainability journey. I think if I look back to 2004 when we started mapping out the bid and think where we are now. That is a, a fantastic progress we've made. It's a really big journey. It's not over yet, and I think there's still some way to go in parts of the world of events to really embed sustainability. And I suppose the big um, unknown yet is after the Games, how it is carried on forward. And we're really looking at people like the Legacy Company, future big events in this country, whether it's the Ryder Cup and the Commonwealth Games, the Rugby World Cup. I want to see those take on the mantle and really continue it because if the client organisations are asking for sustainability then all the production companies, all the caterers, all the waste managers, all the other elements of the industry will fall over themselves to demonstrate their capability but it does need that leadership and drive and so we've done that for these seven years and now the baton hands to Rio but back home let's hope that others continue this. <laughs>